Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh everyone welcome back to another episode of the Islamic Calling podcast you guys know that i've been making a series of videos where i basically show why i believe the quran is the word of god that's a great plan i wanted to continue with the series in today's episode i'll actually examine a verse of the quran that are often used to show that there are scientific miracles in the quran what chapter number 96 uh, verse number 15 to 16 says the following uh, but no if he does not desist we will certainly drag him by the forelock a lying sinning sinful forelock this verse is actually talking about abu jahl uh, if you look at it it mentions something interesting which is that no if he does not desist we will certainly drag him by the forelock a lying sinning forelock now that's an interesting statement because why use the sentence forelock why well one of the rules of interpreting the quran is that you interpret the quran with other verses of the quran So there are similar verses in the Quran uh, regarding this. For example, another verse is Quran 55:41. Uh, it says the following: The wicked will be recognized by their appearance, uh, then will be seized by their forelock and feet. Again, the same word is used here. There is another verse. It's Quran chapter 11:56. It says the following: Indeed, I have relied upon Allah, my Lord and your Lord. There is no creature but that he holds it by its forelock. Indeed, my lord is on a path that is straight so again it mentions the four law actually imam al qurtubi tries to explain this verse uh, in his uh, tafsir which of course even jurais and he says the following he only singled out the four law because the arabs use that when they describe a person as submissive and they say the four law of so and so is only in the hand of so and so that is he is obedient to him so that's what it means it means obedience or submission right and if you go by this interpretation all of the verses make sense basically on the day of resurrection allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grab this evil people by the forelock meaning he will subdue them however there is one interesting detail in quran chapter 96 16 and that doesn't quite fit his interpretation chapter 96 16 says the following but no if he does not desist we will certainly drag him by the forelock lock a lying sinful forelock now of course dragging someone by the forelock as we discussed it basically means subduing someone but then why say a lying sinning forelock because it doesn't seem to make sense because if it is the case that grabbing someone the by the forelock uh, means subduing someone then why would allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeat that same sentence right he was already subdued by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right so then how can that be lying and sinful right it doesn't make sense here it seems to be that somehow forelock is maybe meant in a literal way and interestingly enough ibn kathir actually did interpret this verse in this way where he basically interpreted he basically also what is describing uh, abu jahl's forelock as sinful meaning the forehead of abu jahl is lying in its statement and sinful in its action so that's what ibn kathir says but how does it make sense like how can like the forelock lie and sin unless you actually try to look at this sentence or understanding of forelock from a scientific point of view so basically our forelock or the area behind the forelock is where a part of the brain rests it's called the prefrontal cortex this is basically a frontal part of the brain right and what's interesting is that this area of the brain is actually responsible for us take making decisions or if if it's not responsible somehow it is it has strong correlation with us making decisions or when we do something wrong or any kind of decisions we make and this is pretty much well established in the scientific literature the argument goes that when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually describing the forelock what he means is that basically the frontal part of the brain because if you look at the verse in context since it is describing some kind of action it has to have something to do with us making decisions right and if it is the case then if you look at it from a scientific point of view it makes perfect sense because this frontal part of our head is actually literally responsible for making decisions for example there is actually a research paper by dr shintaro funtashi uh, who is a professor and a doctor and his uh, paper was published in frontiers which is a peer reviewed uh, research journal and he said the following executive function is thought to be the coordinated operation of multiple uh, neural process and allows to accomplish a current goal flexibility the most important function of the prefrontal cortex is the executive function among a variety of executive functions in which the prefrontal cortex participates decision making is one of the most important although the prefrontal uh, contribution of to decision making has been examined using a variety of behavioral tools tasks uh, recent studies using fmri have shown that the prefrontal cortex participates in decision making under free choice condition says decision making under free choice condition represents the very first stage of 
for any kind of decision making process it is important that we understand its natural mechanism so basically he's saying what i just i just described the prefrontal cortex or the front part of our brain basically is responsible for most of the decisions that we make or all the decisions we make as a matter of fact this is true for all mammals as well uh, another paper published in nature uh, which is very well established a scientific journal it says the following Recent work has suggested that the prefrontal cortex or PFC plays a key role in context dependent perceptual decision making. In this study, we address that role using a new method of identifying task relevant dimension and uh, neural population activity. Specifically, we show that the PFC has multi dimensional code for context, decisions, and both relevant and irrelevant sensory information. Moreover, these representations evolve in time with an early linear uh, accumulation process, accumulation phase, followed by a phase of rotational dynamics. So this is why Allah SWT describes Abu Jahl's forelock as lying and sinful, because it literally is lying and sinful. Like the, he uses this organ or the organ behind his forelock to you know, engage in his lies, engage in his deception, engage in his sinful acts, right? It makes perfect sense so that's the argument actually and i think personally i think this is actually quite convincing like first of all someone could argue that well you know couldn't this mean like some kind of metaphorical way where basically uh you know because maybe it's it's talking about when we do sujud right for example when we do sujud or we prostrate we put our forehead on the ground right so maybe that's what he's talking about because abu jahl doesn't do that this word is being used to kind of like implicate his like sinful nature, right? Now, on the surface, this interpretation does make sense, but there is one problem with this interpretation, which is that the verse actually says lying and sinful. Now, of course, sinful, the word sin, to use the word sinful makes sense, but the word lying doesn't make sense here. Because if it is the case that forelock represents not praying, then it doesn't make sense to say lying because not praying is not lying it's just you know sinful it is sinful but it's not lying so the word lying doesn't match here so it has to be more than just not praying right it has to be decision making in general and so from that point of view this scientific kind of like explanation actually makes more sense here this word orlog is often used in other places as well for example there is actually a hadith where the same word is used uh, for example it is in same muslim it says the following urwat al bariki reported allah Muslim, having said this good is tied to the forelock of a horse it was said to him oh messenger of allah why is it so he the prophet said for reward and booty until the day of judgment and we about this in Sahih muslim 1873b now again the word forelock is used and and it's used in an interesting way because it says that good is tied to the forelock of horses now the thing is that okay we understand why it's tied to like you know human beings forelock a forelock right because of the prefrontal cortex but what about horses and then the professor some then later describes uh when someone asks him why he says that for reward and booty which means that it has something to do with the horse's action right and again if you use the scientific interpretation it makes sense because the part of the brain that is actually responsible for horses making decisions is the cerebrum and guess where the cerebrum is is again behind the uh forehead or the forelock for example, i will actually show you guys a picture of this uh, you'll see it on the screen for example i'll give you one article in msd it says the following central nervous system include the brain and spinal cord the brain is divided into three main sections the brain stem which controls many basic life functions the cerebrum which is the center of concert, conscious decision making and the cerebellum which is involved in movement and motor control so these are the three uh, part of the brain the horse have and the second one which is the cerebrum is basically behind if you look at the picture is basically behind the forelock because good is tied to the actions of the horses and that's true when because the horse's decisions are actually dependent upon your decision so how you use the horse and how the horse chooses to obey you is what brings you good things so when the papa also says good is tied to the forelock of the horse is absolutely correct and it makes perfect sense now so after looking at all this all the evidences and all the interpretation i think the scientific interpretation here makes the most sense now then again that begs the question or that raises the question that how did Prophet in the sixth century know about this know about the function of not only 
brain function of not only human beings but also animals like horses like how do you know that brother i asked a very good question so again the best explanation here would be that whoever wrote this is someone who is all knowledgeable that is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that is god so i shall see you guys next time inshallah if you guys like the video don't forget to like share subscribe if you want to support me then you can support me by becoming a patron or becoming a youtube member and inshallah see you guys next time